Hey guys, we're about to get into a brand new series called Building Habits, which is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from say 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow when I'm playing this game and you guys can follow them too. What you'll notice is you might be missing a lot of opportunities to play winning moves. That's okay. Focus on the fundamentals. What I'm trying to get you to do is build good habits and play high percentage moves that will increase your rating. So we got the white pieces. I always have the uh, these things on that tells you where you can move to. Um, I think it's important to know how the pieces move. If you know how the pieces move, you should know pawns move two squares. One of the best ways to start would be e4. That's right, we got the username VBKN. It, it's a tough, no one's gonna know it's me. No one's gonna know it's me. I, I'm real under the radar here, guys. I'm real stealth. So, okay, I've played e4. It's all about controlling the center. My opponent's played g6. To me, he's basically not controlling the center. I don't think it's absurd to play another center move. Two squares as well. Now, my opponent's played knight h6. Based on the rules that I have there, which is basically anything towards the center, I would call a good move, or that's the goal. If I see a move like this, I can already assume my opponent's probably not playing a good move. However, if I touch the bishop, I'll notice I can take that. What I notice is that at the lower levels, everybody takes things as soon as they can take them. So I'm going to take that knight. If this pawn went here, I would take it. If this pawn went here, I would take it. Because that's what I see everyone do. At the lower levels, if you can take something, it's immediate. You just take, take, take. So I'm absolutely going to take that straight off the bat. Now, uh, my next, I got to develop here. I talked about these being the target squares. I want to move my pieces towards the middle of the board. I'm attacking those two squares. Okay, my opponent has done the same thing. He's gone over here. Boom, I'm not even calculating here. I'm taking that. Get it off the board. And it wouldn't be absurd to play this move now. This is a capture, I'm gonna do it 10 times out of 10. Okay, so he's gone He's gone here. Now, I'm probably gonna just take a moment and think about what he's doing with this move. You should always be doing that. These bishops, I mean, I have to be conscious of what squares they're attacking so I don't blunder pieces. This bishop attacking all these squares. Now, e4 is being attacked. I put my knight here to actually defend both of those squares. So if I'm, if I'm remembering why I put the knight there, I could say, look, I'm defending these two squares, that's defended. Even though he's attacking it, I have it covered. Okay, maybe I don't see that, maybe I maybe I want to defend it one more time. I move my queen. G5 played, don't know what he's up to. Don't know what he's up to. I'm going to ignore it, I'm going to castle. He could be doing something here. Maybe I would think about taking that, but I'm going to castle. I'm going to castle. He's attacking my, my pawn, he's attacking my knight. What am I going to do with the knight? I'm going to try to go towards the center. So if these are the target squares and I get attacked, it's it's most likely that I'm just going to go here. Now, why do I have the tactics rule in place? You might say it's weird. Why are you telling people not to use tactics? It's because, dude, when you're rated 400, you probably don't know what tactics are, and you shouldn't. Like, um, as as you improve, you should learn tactics, and then you'll probably get up to the next level of this series. But when you're just starting out brand new in chess, I think you can get you can improve your chest just by doing these things. You can add tactics later. Okay, so I brought my knight into the center of the board. Now I've pretty much moved everything, except these rooks. This pawn might be hanging, but again, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm not even thinking about that. All I'm thinking is like, bring the rooks to the middle. Because that's, that's what I outlined. I said, hey, it's all about the middle of the board. It's all about the middle of the board. Okay, now I just get attacked. He's attacked my knight. I gotta move this thing. Technically, if I'm trying to stay in the center of the board, I might interpret that as trying to stay within this box. So, let's say I play here. Knight takes g4, it's a hanging pawn, but you can never be sure whether this move is good or bad, so we, we go here, we go knight d3. We have to represent the 400 elo. I think knight d3 is in the center of the board, and in general, what I'm seeing is everything, everything that you see on the screen, if you follow these rules, you're gonna get a decent position. You might be missing good moves, but you hopefully won't be playing bad moves. So I've got this pawn covered. Rook g5 played. Again, if I just look at what he might be threatening, 
I don't see anything there, and he's still hitting his pawn. So I'm just going to continue with another move, and I'm bring my rook to the middle. These can't be bad moves so far. You know, I've, I'm sort of following all my intended rules. I'm going to bring my rooks in the middle. And of course, what you're going to eventually see is time is going to become an issue. When you're playing online, time is simply part of the game. It just is. So while you might be playing amazing moves following all these rules, your, your opponent might just be flagging you. <laughs> and and that, like, maybe that's what's happening here. So he goes rook over here. He's attacking this pawn. Now, I should feel comfortable knowing my king is defending it. I should feel comfortable. That could be enough. But at this point, when he's attacking my pawn, you sort of have to evaluate whether this is safe or not. Hopefully, you can see that the king is covering it. and He doesn't have anything else attacking it. So I'm just going to maybe play. Play my other knight in the center. Play my other knight in the center. Take a free piece. That's not a free piece. That's a pawn. Pawns get blundered all the time. Pawns get blundered all the time. E6. Okay, he's hitting my knight. Again, I have to go back. I'm trying to stay within this realm. I don't think it would be you know, unreasonable to go here, so I'm going to go here. I could also go knight there, but if I went knight there, I would maybe block my queen from protecting my pawn. And I've got everything in the center so far. Knight E3 formation complete. Yeah, it would look pretty funny. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be a great move. So I got knight f4. I, I know my other knights here protecting. Hopefully I know how those pieces move. Pawns aren't pieces. Yes, that's why I'm not taking this. Of course, believe me, I know that's hanging. So he goes rook all the way over here. Now, there might be a lot of moves I should do here, but if I see my pawn hanging, I think playing a3 just immediately without thinking, it's probably going to be a good move. It's like, hey, look, I see what you're up to. You're attacking my pawn. Now it's defended. You can't do anything else to me. So I've invested a lot of time. We're on move 15 here. Obviously, I've been sort of speaking at the same time. So he goes pawn up. Not even going to think. Why not? Because it's a capture. Guys, anytime there's a capture on the table, we just we just go for it. We go for it. It doesn't matter. Okay, queen there. Capture. Trust me, when you're at 400, buddy, if there's a capture on the board, I mean, we, we go. We go. We do those. Absolutely, we do. Okay, now he's taken back. Now, I have a couple different different options here. Queen, knight, rook. Fair to say that my knight is closer than my queen. More likely I play this move. Now, if you see queen takes e6, fantastic. It's a, it's a great move. But I'm just saying it's possible that you take with the knight. It's quite possible. So I'm going to play knight takes. Okay, he's moved the king up. Again, this isn't so much about this discovered check. This is me just taking a pawn. I'm just going to take a pawn because I see the rooks attacked. I probably don't even know that it's check right now. I might not have any idea. He might not have any idea. He's probably playing rook, rook g8 as we speak. Now he moves the king. So now my knight's attacked, but my plan was to take this. And what we're seeing here is an example where I think it's very likely I lose this game because we're not quite in an end game. We're not quite in an end game. And it's not smart to bring my king out. You know, the rooks are still on the board. Now, Rook h5, it's a great move. Do I think that in this position, white is going to bust out you know, the best moves? I don't. With 10 seconds ticking down, I think it's I think it's extremely reasonable that you know the guy goes in the center, maybe gives a check, centralizing the knight, as we've been talking about. And with 7 seconds, am I, am I going to come up with brilliant moves here? Probably not. Probably not. King there. And, and what am I going to come up with in this move? 4 seconds. I play g3, and I easily lose this game. And I flag. There we go. Minus 7 to start. 393. I followed, I think I followed most of the rules on our on our score sheet there. So the, what I'm going to do for next game is I'm going to try to do the same thing. But I'm going to play them a little bit faster, and maybe speak a little bit faster, to try to represent the fact that when you guys are playing, you don't have to explain to everybody. You know what I mean? You guys don't have to explain all your thoughts to everybody at the same time. So I think there's a little bit of, of time that I'm spending doing that. So try to represent, uh, you know, account for that, playing a little bit faster. But from what we saw here, I think this is a pretty reasonable game. I, you know, I got my pawns in the center. I took 
pretty much everything as soon as I could take it. Now, these might not be good moves. And if if someone told you or looked at this game or you had a coach, they'd be like, hey, don't give up your bishops like that. And then maybe you would improve and, and you wouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is that if you only do these things on screen, then this will this will just uh, this will get you to a certain rating. And I want to see what that rating is, because I'm convinced that by only following these, what, like nine things on screen, I think you can get to a pretty good rating. So we only played 22 moves that game. The goal next game is to maybe get some more moves in, get some more volume, maybe get to an end game. OK, we got uh, we got white pieces again. OK. 388. I'm, I'm the higher rated player here. Speed run is zero elo. We'll see. We'll see. I could end up at zero. Absolutely. Maybe these uh, things on screen are terrible pieces of advice. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. So e4, c5. I'm going to go knight f3. This is a move I remember from last game. Now, d4, it's like, to me, that move might just lose a pawn. Um, you know, counting the amount of defenders is intimidating intimidating so i'm gonna go knight c3 these are moves that i played last game he's done the same things again pieces that control the center i don't think it's unreasonable to play bishop here okay e6 um this move who knows if i'm winning or losing a pawn there let's be real so we're, we're we're gonna hit him with the d3 okay d5 played immediate capture i'm 400 immediate immediate capture okay now i see that my bishop's attacked now, bishop here is, is not crazy, but let's just say I'm going to play bishop here because it attacks the center. It, it still attacks the center, and, and that's sort of more following our rules. Okay, b5 played. Knight takes b5, a move, but again, we're talking about free pieces. I think it's very possible that knight b5 isn't played here, and we castle. Why? Because we're supposed to castle as soon as possible. So I do. I castle. c4 gets played. At this point, that's a capture. We take those immediately immediately now after that capture i'm probably rationalizing right now that my bishop is lost maybe getting a little tilted but it doesn't matter there's another capture on the table take it immediately all captures all captures when you're when you're at the 400 level that's just what you do you capture okay now my bishop is stuck bishop's stuck i've probably realized that by now now of course i know a bunch of good moves here maybe knight takes there i get two pawns but it doesn't matter We'll just go for this. Go for bishop takes c4. Okay, so I've got a pawn. Now, maybe I play here. It controls, you know, the center, as I've indicated. And my next two moves are probably going to be me putting my rooks out. Me putting my rooks out. So I'm just going to do this one. Why? Because it attacks the king. That looks like a good move to start with. And then I'll go here. Again, I'm not putting a lot of thought into these moves. Just getting the rooks to the center, all my pieces controlling the center. And now at this point, I have to find something else to do. You know, uh, from the from the outlines that I've given on the screen, we've kind of done everything in a good way. Like the knights, both attacking uh, the center, the bishops doing well. And at this point, we have to start making some other moves. So what kind of moves would I come up with? This is the middle game portion. I haven't really put any guidelines on here. For the middle game and and what we should do in general but i did that on purpose because there's no way you can put rules for the middle game i mean every position is going to be different it's going to require a different move so exactly tesco it's exactly what i was going to say you're 400 start pushing random pawns that's a, that's exactly what happens at this point in the game it's exactly what happens now this is something really easy to fix but Whenever bishop d6 check, sure, but that's that's you know that's not the easiest that's not the easiest move to play. H4, random pawn move. Okay, that's an exchange. Let's go. That's an exchange. Oh, maybe I have another check. Let's do it. Push random pawns. Of course it's gonna happen. It's 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 very common. Very common. Now, okay, I might I might put a, put a knight in the center here. I think this move is also pretty reasonable. Maybe I'm attacking a pawn, maybe I'm controlling the center. Can I explain why I'm doing this? Well, what, what I'm doing is uh, I'm making moves that I think would be pretty common at the 400 level. And I'm going to see where I end up with a seemingly ironed out um, set of moves. Okay, so I'm going to give a check. You know, that's fairly centralized. I, I'm not going to get sidetracked and start going to the side of the board because I've outlined that as one of the important things to remember about this, this, uh, 
these rules is you always generally want to operate in the center. Always in the center. Okay, he's played Rook there. That's a free piece. Hopefully we see that. That's one of our cardinal rules. Take absolutely free things. Take absolutely free things. Okay, so I've taken that. Now, important to see that's not a free thing. We don't take that. My Rook's got to find a safe square. Okay, maybe I go here. It's defended, but I think it's fair to say that that Rook there is a safe... Now, why am I not getting checkmated here, guys? Because I made a random pawn move. I'm telling you, the 400s can be real geniuses sometimes. Okay, my Rook is attacked again. Bishop c7, that's a tactic. Let's make a, a centralizing Rook move. Let's make a centralizing Rook move. Okay, that's a, a trade. We go for that. Okay, now we're in the endgame. It's time for the king. It's time for the king. Just immediately, king. That's one of our rules. He's moving his king. We're moving our king. I, I'm not going to evaluate this. As long as something's not hanging, it's time for the king. So we said move the king a lot. And if we can, attack our opponent's pawns. So I probably want to just you know get my pieces to center squares and move my king a lot. That's all I said. Move my king a lot. Attack opponent's pawns where possible. That's a free piece. I'm going to take that. Move your king a lot in the endgame, especially when you're starting out. I think that's the best way to learn the endgame. More often than not, moving your king a lot will get you the win. There we go. There we go. That's a win. That's a win. We're one point higher than, than where we started. But seriously, when you get in the endgame, so many of us, so many of us, are going to take these pieces and put them in the center. Do something. Just move them around. But I'm trying to tell you, when you're at like 400, 500 elo, use your king. Do you, like, I'm being dead serious here. Like, all I did was I brought my king into the middle of the board, and I just won the game immediately. He just hung his bishop. But that's what you need to do. You need to use your king. Your king is an attacking piece in the end game. So you have to, you have to bring it in. Black also tried to use his king, but my king was in the center. Then I can either go to this side of the board or that side of the board. I can choose. Use your king in the end game, the dad bod shuffle. There we go. We play a little bit faster, but still, you know, we're, we're, we're low on time here. That's fine. Let's get another game. We won king of the hill. We did win king of the hill. That's correct. Okay, we got the black pieces for the first time. We got the black pieces for the first time. So we'll see what uh, what opening he does. Okay, so this, I'm probably gonna just going to play this because it's two moves, better than one usually. Um, and it, if he played this, I would have done the same thing. Okay, again. Knight controlling center squares. My other knight probably going to come here. It's very likely that you start off the game and your knights are the first two things you do. It's very likely. Or I should say, after you move a center pawn, your knight's... Uh, would be one of the first first things you do. Okay, d5 could be played here, but more natural. Bishop c5, cover the center squares. Cover the center squares. That's a capture. I'm taking that immediately. I'm taking that immediately. And I'm castling. Why? Because I said we want to castle ASAP. Castle ASAP. What's my next move? It's probably going to be this. Why? It strengthens the center and it helps me develop my remaining piece. So there we go. I'm going to do that. I don't think these moves are unreasonable. I think I'm following the uh, uh, the moves that I've outlined here. Bishop needs to develop. Now let's say my, my move to really attack the center would be that one. Technically, this move would attack the center as well. I don't, I don't think it's unreasonable to put the bishop there. That totally could happen. But I'm just going to go here. Um, it attacks the center. It's where we, where we want to go. Okay, he's castled. Now, these are the three pieces I haven't really moved yet. So, let's say I move my rook to the to the middle. Probably want to move my queen out. Okay, he goes here. We take that just immediately. There's no way I don't take that. Now, he's threatening this. Do I see this? No. Hell no. I have no idea what that move is. That's a fork. Never heard of a fork before. I'm going to keep doing my, my moves, which is you know getting my, my queen so that my, my rook can come to the middle. d5 is a tactic. Never seen that before. Don't worry. When it happens to you, then you'll understand what it is immediately. 
after it happens to you once, you can commit that to memory, not let it happen again. Okay, he's going there. We'll bring the rook to the middle. Boom. Well, what we did last, what we did last time is we played a, some random move over here. I'm going to play h6. I think in general, pawns near the king. Once you move them two squares, it's going to be a little bit weak. So it's a good idea to think, okay, if I don't have a move ready, I'm just going to play a move in front of my king to make sure I never get back rank mated. At the 400 level, one of the best things you can do for yourself is never get back rank mated. That would be so impressive. Okay, so he finally plays it. Here I'm thinking, damn. Here I'm thinking, damn. I maybe, maybe I missed this. What the hell is this? My pieces are just hanging here. Okay, we're obviously taking that. We're obviously taking that. It's a capture. We lost a piece. It looks like we did. Absolutely. Okay, our knight's being hit. Let's go to the center. <laughs> no tactics? Wait, what? Yeah, this guy's not a real 400. Get him out of here. He's not following my curriculum. <laughs> this, this guy's on the sauce, man. Didn't capture the rook. It was a long way away. Remember, my knight was hanging, and the idea is not to lose pieces. So seeing my knight hanging, I'm going to react to that first. And when I say I'm going to react to that first, you say you say that that's what you should do. Uh, so he plays this. Now, I've just moved my knight here. I know that this is worth more than that. I'm taking that. I'm taking it. And this is not me playing a GM move. That's just me taking material that is worth more than what I'm taking it with. Now, that's a trade. That's a trade. Now, whenever you are up material, no matter what your rating is, I think your goal should always be to trade material. Trade material at all costs. That should be your goal no matter what. Okay, so he took back. Now, I see both my pieces are against the pawn. Rooks like to have things open, and I'm not attacking the center because everything's in the way. So I'm going to go over here, and now I'm really attacking the center. Hey, Mags, am I going to be doing this series for many different ratings? Absolutely. I, I have what are, in my opinion, some rules for the beginning level, which is what we're doing now, and then I have some more rules for some of the more advanced levels. So maybe I take this pawn, but hell no, we take that knight. Of course, that's a trade. So we're just starting out with this level, but there'll be more levels to this. Okay, he goes there. Hopefully, we see that that bishop's defending it. Now, I have a queen and a rook. That's it. That's all I have. Maybe I maybe I start activating my queen. Maybe I start making random pawn moves. Let's make a random pawn move, see what happens. Now, of course, you guys can look at this and improve on many aspects. Like, when I make this random pawn move, what should you be doing? You should be taking this queen and activating it. And that's why, as I play all these games, the point is you can look at all the games that I'm playing. You can see I'm following these rules. But then you can also say, look, uh, there are points where he shouldn't follow those rules and he should do this instead. Should he just play a random pawn move at some point? No, he should activate his queen. And that's where you can take over, break the rules a little bit, and, and play queen b5 yourself. That'd be a great move. Okay, he's played knight there. I don't know what a discovered attack is. All I see is a free pawn in the center of the board, and I put my rook there to attack the center. I'm taking that. I'm taking that. There's no way I'm not taking that. Okay, knight h4. Now, seeing that this is attacked when the knight goes there, I, I think that's a tactic. I think that's a tactic. So, for the purposes of the game, I'm not going to move the rook because I think that that's a tactic. That's a discovered attack. When you see this move, you're not thinking about your rook being hanging. You don't know what that is. You hang your rook there. You don't see it. Okay. He takes your rook. Now you're like, oh, God damn it. This guy uncovered an attack. Maybe you start to realize, wait, he moved this, but then he was attacking something with the piece behind it. Eventually, you start to, to realize that was a discovered attack. Okay, I'm going to take a free pawn. That's why I put my queen there. I didn't see this. Don't hang free pieces? Yes, but no tactics comes before don't hang free pieces. No tactic comes before don't hang. Believe me, as I said, 
if you guys can see that that is attacked and move it away, oh, you're gonna be you're gonna be even higher rated. You're gonna outperform the system here. Okay, knight there. What's he up to? Literally no idea. We take more free stuff. Literally no idea what he's doing. Okay, that's a check. Now, remember, we're technically in an end game, and I always said pieces towards the center. We're gonna choose to go this way as opposed to that way. King F8. Okay, he goes back. Literally don't know what he's doing. Uh, let's let's push this pawn because it's closer to becoming a queen. So that's that's our pawn we're pushing. Okay. He's attacking the pawn, but it is defended. It is defended. Um, I think it's not reason or not unreasonable to move my queen. You know, I'm like still protecting the pawn. I'm getting out of the way because all I want to do is push it all the way to the end. Okay, my queen's attacked, and now I've got some decisions to make. He's attacking my pawn, and he's attacking my pawn there. I've got to move my queen. I've got to move my queen. So let's say I go queen here. That looks like if I had to choose a square to defend this pawn, I'd probably choose queen here. Queen c5? Yeah, but I'm not defending my pawn there, and there's no way I see that tactic. There's no way I do. Okay, he goes there. Literally don't know what he's doing. I don't even know what a discovered attack is. I'm going to push my pawn. All, I'm, all I want to do is this. Queen d4 pieces to the center. Yeah, but I can't be blundering free pieces. Okay, now that he's let me do it, boom. We go queen to the center. Is this a pin? I don't know. Never heard of it. All I'm doing is putting my piece in the center. Okay, all I see is he's defended his knight. I'm pushing my pawn all the way. That's been my plan since day one. I've only had one plan this game. Okay, he goes bishop there. Now, maybe I queen, but maybe I, maybe I take this. I should take it. It's a free piece. I'm queening. I'm going to take this. Maybe I push this pawn. Who knows at this point? And I flag. Now I'm saying, God damn, chess is such a stupid goddamn game. What a stupid... Oh my... I'm never playing this game again. So dumb. Literally so stupid. You know, I click my, click my analyze button. I'm like, man, that's such a dumb game. I thought I was beating that guy. You know, I go into full screen. I'm like, chess.com, tell me I was beating that guy. I check the report. It's like, dude, 72.1 accuracy, 57 accuracy. I was destroying this guy. Now I consider quitting chess. You know, I mean, you can see the evaluation. It goes up all the way, down all the way, up, down, up, down. Like, it's just, just a seesaw. Only two blunders. There you go. The goal is to, is to get a good report. Even if you lose the game, even if it's on time, get a good report. I'm hoping that my advice here is going to give you guys a good report. And again, it says personalized trading. Personalized trading, castling. Sorry, was there an issue with my castling? Could I have done that better? Like, maybe, maybe I needed to, like, <laughs> I don't know, put more swing into it or, <laughs> woo, just really, really launch myself over there. I, I don't know, chess.com doesn't like my, my technique there. It doesn't really like the way I, I, I launched over to the king side there. Um, so, I, okay, I'll have to work on my castling. I'll have to work on my castling. But not an outrageous thing to do would probably be to get your game report and to do some of the lessons that they recommend. For example, castling. Let's see the lesson. Castling is a special move. Wait, what? Well, I know what it is, Chief. I did it in the game. White is ready to castle. Castle white's king.
<laughs> can I get some? Uh, can I get some hype for that? <laughs> can I get some subs for that, boys? Got a check mark there. All right, all right. Maybe you don't do the chess.com training. Back to the chat. Back to the chess. Back to the chess. We go to the. We go to the next game. We go to the next game. Game aborted. I probably don't even know what this means. Probably never seen that before. I'm like, all right, chess.com's bugged. Okay, we start the game with our same move. E4. Okay, he's played E5. Um, D4 again, it's like, this is a bit too risky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my, my usual. I'm gonna play my usual. Okay, knight here. Knights control the center. Basically, you should just avoid, even when you're first beginning chess, avoid playing moves like that. Avoid playing knights to the side. Try to go to the middle. It's important. My pieces are simply better placed than, than going to the side. A6. Okay, I don't know what the guy's doing. I have no idea. I'm going here. This is a setup I've used before. This is a setup I've used before. Holy smokes, that was the smoothest castle I've ever seen by a 400 player. Maybe you have a future in chess. Thank you. Means a lot. Okay, h6. I have literally no clue what this guy's doing. Uh, but I'm going to castle. Castle ASAP, remember. See what he's going to do next. I've castled. I've got my pieces controlling the center. Can't complain. Okay, he's gone in the middle. There's a free pawn there. Hell no. We take the knight. We don't see that. All right, now my knight's attacked. We're going to go into the middle of the board because that's sort of, you know, what, what, we're, what we're trying to do here. Okay, b5. Attacking my bishop. I'm generally going back here because it still controls the center instead of choosing another diagonal. He goes here. Now, I should know my knight's defended, so I'm not too scared. I'm going to play this because it lets me get my other piece out. There we go. There we go. All about the center. So I'm probably going to play bishop here as my next move unless he does something. We'll see. We'll see. Gauri, hey, good to see you, buddy. I'm, I'm hoping that it will. I mean, I, I, I'm a natural jokester so i i'm trying to have a little fun with it but um i hope you guys understand that i i am being deathly serious for a lot of this okay my, my knight's attacked um at this point i'm basically going to try to choose a safe square and as i'm choosing them i'm probably realizing that none exist so maybe this maybe this takes me to the f4 square but i don't think i'd play this move immediately i would probably be like no. 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 So we'll just let about 20 seconds expire, and then I'll play knight f4. That'll represent how long it takes me to find that. Okay, it's good enough. All right, knight f4. There we go. Knight f4. Now, that's taking the square from my bishop. I'm probably a little tilted by that. You feel attacked? <laughs> PLV, you're the knight on d5. I feel attacked. So I wonder what he's going to do here. He's taking his time. He's taking his time. Okay, bishop d6. Now, he's attacking my knight, but I know that my intention was to put my bishop there, so I should know that my knight's protected. He's just played there. I should be getting my bishop out. I'm going to make a move that you should always play, and what I've played every single game. You always bring the rooks to those two center squares. Now, I'm going to have to move these two pieces before I can replicate that over here, but we'll see. 
Why am I playing five minute games? Shouldn't low rated players play, you know, longer time control? Um, I don't think so. You might find different advice from different people. Um, I know a lot of coaches like to say, you shouldn't play fast chess, it's bad for you. It's like, dude, screw that. Those are boomers, man. You gotta play fast chess. It's it's gonna help you in the long run. It's how I improved as a player. It's what piques my interest in chess, playing bullet, blitz chess. It's like, you know, I'm not I'm not listening to these these old bras talk about how you're supposed to play 45 minute games when you're starting off chess. No one's gonna play chess. You're gonna start chess, you're gonna play a 45 minute game, you're gonna have to take your dog for a walk after 20 minutes, you're gonna have to resign the game, and you're gonna be like, well, this is dumb. I'm never playing that again. Okay, let's develop the bishop. So my next move, I'm going to develop the queen. It's most likely going to be queen here. And then I'm probably going to get my rook over. Just to complete the sort of basic development that I've outlined. Okay, I see this move. I see it's literally attacking nothing. It's like, dude, I don't care. I'm bringing the, the, the queen out and I'm bringing the rook over. 10 minutes is good as well. Okay, pawn there. It doesn't matter. We take it. Like, we literally... I don't know this is check, but I'm just taking that pawn because we, we take... I mean, it's a capture. Just take things. When you're when you're at 400, just take things. Take that. So, I probably don't even know it's check. He's going to have to realize it's check. So I'm probably like, why is this idiot not taking my pawn back? Oh my god, this guy's so bad at chess. He's a 474, and he doesn't know that pawn's captured this way. <laughs> Lol. This guy's so bad. And then he's going to make like some king move or something, and be like, what the hell is this guy doing? It makes no sense. Because I just have no idea it's check. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> just have no idea. He literally could be spamming this, like, nonstop. And every time he does, he gets this little blink there. I don't know. Maybe he's, like, Canadian. He's like, oh, interesting. It's a goal. The, 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 the net light is uh, going off. That's funny. It's interesting. Zippy, thanks for the reset, buddy. Okay, so like I said, he's played this move. I probably think he's just absolutely garbage at chess. That's another, another thing. I take it. Now, I could take with a knight, but believe me, if you take there and they don't take you back... It's pretty, you know, instinct-based to just keep farming those pawns. Just keep take, take, take. Again, knight takes g6 would kind of be a fork. Pretty advanced move. If you guys can spot that, power to you. I'm going to assume that you might miss it, and I'm going to play pawn takes. And we'll see where it gets us. Queen g5. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to notice that he's attacking this knight. Now, do I see knight e6 check? Hell no. That's a tactic. Um, mm, it's attacked twice. I don't think it's unreasonable in this position to play this move. Why this move? Because I've been talking about how at some point, after you've kind of got all your pieces to the middle, you play a move around your king. And this move not only is a move around my king, but it also defends my knight. Completely reasonable. I'm going to go g3. It might not be the best move. That's pretty weakening, but it's the way she goes. Do I think I should be able to hang my king? Well, it's online chess, so it, it just wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible. Is capturing obligatory? No, but I think when you're starting off, capturing is all you're thinking about. Now, rook there, it might take you some time, but hopefully you can realize that that is actually hanging. Now, this is just... This is just practicing, you know, tactics. Queen and rook, they're lined up against it. Is anything defending it? No, the king, that's it. Now, if I move my queen away, I think I could probably still win this game on time. But following our rules, we absolutely take that. Hell yeah, we do. Okay, king is in check. King goes here. What am I going to do? This is checkmate in one. I think it's totally reasonable to spot that. But let's just say, for argument's sake, I even take here because it's a free pawn. I'm taking something for free. I'm attacking a bunch of bishops. Boom. There we go. Got another win in there.
Okay, we'll take another one. We'll take another one. That was a good game. After a good game, I'm not going to check the I'm not going to check the analysis because whenever you win at the 400 level, you don't give a goddamn like you you don't care. <laughs> They're like, "Oh, I won. That was a perfect game. I have nothing to learn." But if I <laughs> if I lose, then I might check the analysis. Okay, so any move that doesn't take the center, I think I think I should play d4. So I have two pawns in the middle. Now, whenever he develops this knight, I think a good general thing to, to realize is like, when they develop this knight, you can develop this one. When they develop this one, you generally want to develop this one because whatever this is attacking in the middle, this covers in the middle the exact same way. Okay, he does this. I don't know what he's up to, but I'm developing my other knight. Okay, what have I been playing every single game? I've been playing bishop here. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. And what am I going to do? I'm going to castle as soon as possible. You see how I'm starting to play the beginning phase a little bit faster? It's because I'm getting used to it. These are now habits. I, I know that my knights generally go here pretty much every game I've played so far. I know that my bishop wants to go here. So until my opponent plays something that stops these moves, I'm going to keep doing them. Um, okay, he goes here. Literally don't know what this dude is doing. Um, let's put pieces in the center. That's always been a good, always been a good thing to do. Always been a good thing to do. Now, my bishop probably wants to develop. Okay, he goes here. He might want to take my knight. Um, I think whenever you get pinned, it's very, very logical to play this move. So I'm going to do that. And that's probably going to become a habit. Basically, anytime I get pinned, it's like I want to make a move in front of my king anyway. That's been a rule. Let's attack that. And do I see g4 here? Of course I don't. Because, you know, it traps the piece. That's That's not... Not something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to notice here. So I'm going to play bishop there. Control the center. Why not? Hey, it's really Darrow. Uh, not right now, I'll say. Thanks for the subs uh, in the meantime, guys. Okay, so I've, I've gone here. What's my next move? It's probably going to be one of these queen moves. Um, now, I think that it's quite reasonable that I go queen here. Uh, but what I might learn from this game is that if black takes here and I take back, that I might find I dislike my pawns being shattered in front of my king. And that's something I can hopefully learn from. So in the future, I might choose this move instead of this move so that it guards my knight. And I always want to take back with the queen or with a piece in front of my king so that I don't ruin the pawns. Four hundred would have played g four. Hey, you might be right. But while a four hundred might have played g four, a four hundred might not have played all these moves. So what I'm presenting to you is, in my opinion, a series of things that you can do. No pre moves, no tactics, no gambits, no sacrifice. Just a bunch of things that I think you can use in your games. And if you use them, you might not always be playing the best moves. But although you'll miss some tactics and you'll miss some wins, I think fundamentally you'll be playing better chess. And then when I start to introduce more things into this series, you add them to this, these initial rules, and it'll just make you a more well-rounded player overall. Okay, that's, I mean, we capture it, obviously. Okay, now hopefully we get to see that, that this is hanging. Like, you know, we, we, we generally like to think we, we take those. Now, knight and bishops, Number one, just if you ever have an option to like capture with either one, you generally always want to operate with your knights first. Always with the knights first. So the knight is going to go. And then the bishop should take after. So I play, knight takes, it's going to take back. Well, he might take back. We'll see. So I've just done this move, and I'm expecting, look, if you take back, I just win a free pawn. Okay, he hasn't taken back. Instead, he's attacked my bishop. Now, what have I played every single time I've done this, guys? I've gone here. This habits. Every time my bishop has been attacked, in every game I've played so far, I'm going to bring my bishop here because it still controls the center. And this has, been, this has been what I've done every game. Okay, he's played queen here. Now, there might be a free pawn here, but I, I see a capture. I'm going to trade it. I'm going to trade it. 
that's what we do. So I'm going to make this trade. We'll see how he takes back. Okay, he doesn't take back. Instead, he plays rook here. Now we actually see the benefit of number two rule in red. You guys can read it. What does it say? It says no tactics. Do I know what the hell this is? Hell no. I see a piece that I can take. Buddy, we are taking that. Hell no. We don't know what tactics are. Let's go. Free piece for me. I'm telling you, these 400s have it nice, man. Okay. So now I might notice that my queen's attacked. Okay, I gotta move my queen. Where am I gonna go? I wanna go towards the center. Can I go to any of these squares? No, that's exactly where he's attacking me from. So let's say I choose here. I think that's, that's fair. <laughs> I can't believe I lose to these people, but that's what, that's what I want you to think when you're looking at this. It doesn't matter if you're 800, it doesn't matter if you're 200, you just started chess. This could be you, POV, and these are the people you're playing against. Everyone's going to make blunders. I've been making blunders since I started this series because what I've outlined to you on the screen, it's not foolproof. This piece has been trapped, by the way, for like 20 moves. Have I, have I taken it? Hell no. Taking everything is useful habit. Well, XO Stark, what we do in chess is we build. So I start with this because, um, okay, the best way I can explain this to you, because I hate this subject, is chemistry. Grade 9 chemistry, they teach you stuff, and then you pass grade 9 chemistry. And then grade 10 chemistry, they're like, hey, grade 9 chemistry was a lie. Here's grade 10 chemistry. And you're like, wait, what? And then you fail grade 10 chemistry. And then you do it again, and you get it right, and they're like, hey, here's grade 11 chemistry. Grade 10 was a lie, by the way. So that's exactly what's happening here. Of course, I'm not going to be taking pieces routinely for the rest of my life. Now, my piece is getting attacked. Hopefully I can see that that's defended. My piece wants to still control the center, so I'm going to go here. But the general idea I'm getting at is that I'm, in, I'm employing rules right now that will not be right 100% of the time. But if you do them, you'll maybe be correct 80% of the time, and that's a good percentage to be at. Rather than trying to explain to a 400, hey, uh, you're supposed to take this piece here, but not here, and you sort of want to take it here, but not there. And it's way too confusing. The guy's just starting chess. Tell him to take everything. You know, if it's an even trade, take it. I think that's good advice to start off. Okay, pawn move in the center. I'm just going to make a pawn move. Um, I've already got my king a safety square. Um, I actually do want to play this, but I, I noticed that I can't do that. So I might play this next. I might play this. These are my random pawn move times. Okay, random pawn move. Okay, my knight's being attacked. Center, can't go here. Center, I'll go there. Boom, these are, these are decisions. I, my knight's being hit, where can I go? These are always the target squares. Whenever your knight's being hit, can I go to the center squares? Can I go there? No, can I go here? Let's say yes. Yeah, if you trade all your pieces, you can't hang them. There you go. There you go. The other guy's doing well for a 400. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we talk about me for a second? I'm, <laughs> I'm a 400 as well. I don't think I'm doing too damn bad. Got a bit of goddamn credit around here. Okay, that's an exchange. We take that. Okay, he's just taken back. Um, again, I probably want to bring my rook to the middle. I still can't do that. It's like super annoying. Who knows what I'm going to do here? Random pawn move. And I think it's totally fair that white might have played this move by now, but I'm just going to do random pawn move. Okay, he's gone here. That's a capture. I take that. Now, what's another random pawn move? I might do this. It's like, look, that actually blocks that square, kind of supports this knight. This isn't the craziest move to do. I'm going to put my rook in the middle now that I can. That's a trade. We take those. Now, at this point, maybe I make a random pawn move. Maybe I actually move this knight. Who knows? Maybe I play a5. At this point, you know, I'm, I've already played a pretty good game. I've followed all, pretty much all my rules. Um, let's here. Let's offer. Let's go away from this and back to the open file. Okay, bishop takes pawn. 
what is this guy doing? I'm going to take it. I'm not going to take this free rook because I'm reacting to this. Okay, he's taking. I'm going to take back. Okay, and we win. We got that one as well. There we go. 411. Big gains out here. Big gains. Not teaching 400s to play, teaching stronger players to smurf. Hopefully I'm teaching the 400s to smurf up to 1,000. That's the idea. Yeah, well, if you guys like it, it might go on YouTube. Let's get a new game. I won that game. Obviously, I'm not going to check the analysis or learn anything. God forbid. Okay, E4, we're going to play E5. E4. I've never seen this opening before. This is brand new to me. I'm going to take that, obviously. Okay, just took with the queen. If I had to pick a knight to develop here, the better one is this. The better one is this. It hits the queen. Hits the queen. Um, he's moved away. Don't really know what's going on. I'm going to play this move. Okay, c4. Now, again, I'm supposed to, at this point, develop my bishop to control the center. I might realize that I can't do that. I've been faced with a position where, you know, for the first time ever, I can't really play the move that I want to play. You know? And I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like, I can't control the center? How do I control the center here? Well, I might be focused on this move, because it's my habit to play the bishop there. So I might even play b6. I might play b6 saying, look, I want to get my bishop there no matter what. Now, there's a lot of good moves here. Bishop b4 checks a great move. I think b6, the thought process might be there. Like, hey, I got to get my bishop there. That's how I do it. I think bishop d6, there's also a case for that. But at the 400 level, you should, you should know that generally you want to move both your center pawns in the game. And if you play this move, you won't be able to move that. So we, we want to we wanna get, get away from that. We're going to go b6. We're going to go b6. Because all I'm thinking about is going here. I don't care. I don't care about whatever is happening to me. It's like, all I know is this is a good move for me. So I'm going to go here. A, a 400 could blunder this. Yes, but take a look at the screen. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't blunder free pieces. That's the only thing I want you to be careful of. Free pieces. Free pieces. He goes queen f4. I'm castling as soon as possible. This should be seven too passive. Yeah, this should be seven is fine. This should be seven is a fine move too. Well, the thing is, b6 you could say is a higher level move, but I would actually prefer bishop e7. I think it's probably a better move. Okay, bishop e3, I'm taking that, not even considering life where I don't take it. Hey, Doriano. So, I mean, we all know that I've been bringing my rook to the center very early, and we all know I've been playing d6 and getting my bishop out. So those are probably going to be my next moves. Okay, d6. This guy is protected. Bishop, have I been really bringing it out too far? No, generally I've been sort of bringing it towards towards the center here. Okay, he goes in the middle. Boom. We don't even care. We take. We take. We always take things. Okay, so we've taken it. He takes back. We absolutely take that. Now, hey, if you get this position... Are you going to see bishop take c4? Discovered attack on the queen? Hell no. Are you going to see a free bishop? Hell yes. We take that. Absolutely we do. And all I've done is, is follow exactly what is written on the screen right there. I'm just following the rules here. Okay, he goes knight there. I'm like, hey, what's this guy doing? Don't really care. I'm probably going to bring my rook into the middle. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Completing what I know to be good, solid development. Good, solid development. Pawn is hanging? Yes, but sometimes we hang pawns. Sometimes we hang pawns. What I want you to focus on at 400 is not to hang free pieces. Pawns can be hung. I still think it's a mistake, but, you know, eventually we'll start to correct that. 
But in general, at 400, you can't be expected to play a game where literally you hang nothing the entire game. It's just, it's too much to ask. Okay, number one. A queen versus two rooks, it's usually good to do that trade at 400. Would I ever give up my queen for anything other than another queen? Hell no. There's zero chance. Zero chance. Uh, would I play queen takes, rook takes, queen takes, king f2, knight g4, forking the king and uh, the queen and winning the entire game? Hell no. My account would be banned if I did that. So I'm going to take my queen. I'm going to move out of the attack. Where do I want to go? Uh, let's just go all the way back here. Some nice safe square. Then I'll just get my queen the heck out of dodge. Okay, he's taken my pawn, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I see a trade, I take a trade. I see a trade, I take a trade. Now, what we're going to notice is that... Now, why not e4 for queen? e4 would be a great queen move. But e4... Am I sure that, that things are covered there that I'm that I'm covering? Look, if you can find queen e4, it's a great move. What I'm saying is, look, if you put your queen on just a square where it's not being attacked by anything, nice safe square, it'll generally be, be a better idea most of the time. Now, I've taken. What is it time for? It's time for not only a random pawn move, but one near the king. And I've always said this, whether it's h5 or h6, it doesn't matter. I just need a random pawn move near the king. This, at, at every point... During every game I've played so far, I have done this. And you guys have seen, this is me building a habit. My habit is to make that escape square for my king and always be moving a pawn around the king before it gets too close to the end of the game. So this isn't me saying, oh, I might get back rank mated, I gotta do this. This is me just going here because that's a habit. I built that up. Ah, that's a trade, I'm taking that. He takes me, I'm like, oh, sick, I'm a goddamn genius. I just played h5, let's go, let's go. <laughs> All right, guy plays b4. Now, b4, it's my turn. Knight to the middle of the board looks reasonable to me. Okay, c5, I'm going to take it. And to be honest, I'm probably going to take it again. I just moved my knight here. I know where this knight moves. You know why? I click it, and it literally shows me the dots. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> there's a pawn on that dot. We take that. Four hundred likes to sacrifice pieces for no good reason, but what I'm telling you guys is that there are no sacrifices allowed. Now you might blunder and you might miss things, but do your best to follow these rules, and I promise you, you'll be better off. Okay, he goes h4. I'm gonna bring my knight back in the middle because knights in the middle are good. Okay, he goes knight there. I think it's very reasonable that I might see this pawn's attacked. Also, it's time for a random pawn move. So let's chuck that up there. He goes knight there. It'd be nice to see this, but, you know, I don't have enough faith in myself. So I'm just going to play a4. Just run this pawn as much as we can. And we'll see what uh, our buddy B Vanilla Beans is up to. Okay, he goes here. I have no idea what he's doing. I'm just going to play this. Okay. Now, he just checked me. Now... At this point, I have so many ways to take this, so many ways, but I'm just going to pick one. I just have to, I simply have to take his knight. Okay, he goes e4. Now, I've been moving my knight from this square to this square a million times, just a million times. Okay, he goes here. It's time to take with the queen. Okay, now he goes here. It's literally just time to use your queen and check him. You just use your queen and check him. Check. Ah, checkmate, idiot. Well, GG, boys. Oh my god, what? Oh no. It's time for my king. It's time for my king. Nope. Okay. Yep, move the king a lot. Attack the pawns. <laughs> you kidding me? This is a, this is a real AFK moment. I wouldn't be sitting at the computer here if I truly played this game. I, there's no way I'd be sitting here. And we've all lost games like this. We've all lost games like this. There's no way I'd still be here 
and not be KO'd. <laughs> it's too real. It's too real. Check, check, and you just totally forget that this guy's sitting down there. Of course this happens. Of course it always happens. Of course it does. Now, we lost this game, so we should go analyze it. We should go analyze it. I'm probably going to be tilted out of my mind. Report. Oh, great. I played 33.3% accuracy. Even though I was winning the entire game. The entire game. I'm probably like, yo, is this bugged or something? <laughs> is this, uh... <laughs> Is this accurate, boys? <laughs> What's going on here? 33 to 20% accuracy? I've been winning the entire... I don't even see any white on there, boys. There's a little blemish at the beginning. It looks like an acne scar. But <laughs> that's looking pretty, pretty solid up there. How am I getting a lesson on castling? Is this a troll? Is this guy at chess.com trolling me? Like, act like he's uh, slipping this into all my personalized training methods? Why do I have castling again? Oh, not this bearded bastard. Oh, god damn it. Dude, I've already, I've already done this one. I've literally done this before. I've already done this. I've, I've done this private. You've already given me a check mark here. The same guy. This, this guy right here, he's already tested me on this. White is ready to castle kingside. Castle white's king. Buddy, I have no issue with castling. No issue with castling. Black's king is ready to save the castle. White's king is prepared to castle queenside. Can you find the move to castle white's king? King e2 is incorrect. This move does not castle white's king. Try again. All right, buddy, that's enough out of you. That's it, I'm done. I'm done with that dude. We'll see him in my next analysis, no doubt. No matter what my game is, I guarantee I'll have castling. Actually, goddammit, now I'm definitely going to have castling. Because I trolled, and I got it wrong. <laughs> okay, now, now I actually trolled myself. Because now it will be in the next lesson. Just.com algorithm is like, wait, this guy's actually an idiot. <laughs> uh, hey, hey guys, have you seen this new account? Uh, VBKN? Idiot can't even castle. Let's give him a few more castling puzzles. Now I've, now, I've, now I've trolled myself. So, yeah. The whole, the whole chess.com team is like, yeah, he's actually pretty stupid. Let's, let's give him a few more. Well, on to the next game. You know, an un unfortunate end there. I lost the game. I'm pretty tilted. So I'm obviously going to immediately go to the next one. E4. Habits. We've already done this. Habits. C6. Okay, I'm like, dude, I don't know what that opening is. I'm going to go here. D5. Boom. We capture those. Knights. You notice how I'm doing this faster and faster? Habits. I'm going to take the center if someone doesn't take it with me. And I'm going to develop my knights. Uh, okay. I can't go here, which is the first time I've experienced that. I just literally can't. So I'm going to go here instead. I, I'm going to try to control a center square. What did I say? As soon as we see moves like this, I'm always going to attack it. Goes back, I'm going to castle. I'm going to castle. And, and hopefully you guys are seeing a pattern. It's, I've actually done this every time so far. I, I'm doing the same things. We'll see, we'll see where it gets me. Hopefully you'll be able to do things faster and faster. And of course the idea is you're supposed to learn things as you go. So, you know, sometimes people might do like a tactic against me, like a fork. And I'll be like, damn, that's a fork. What the hell? And I'll start learning what a fork is. Okay. So rook here. Bishop here, both very good moves. I mean, I'll just attack the center. My next move is probably here. Then queen up and rook over again. Exactly how I've played previous games. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I've castled before my opponents in like every game. And yet I keep getting these chess.com castling personalized training. Okay, that's a capture. I mean, we don't even think about those. Now, rook to the middle of the board. Attacking the center squares. Looking great. Knight takes d4. It could be. Okay, pawn there. I'm going to take it. I have literally no idea what's going on, but hey, that's taking. Now, again, I could blunder my queen here, absolutely, but I don't think it's unreasonable for me to know, based on previous games I've played, that this bishop is 
attacking my queen if I do that. The goal is not to hang something. So I just put my rook on e1. I don't think it's crazy to take with the rook. Now, if he takes here, believe me, I'm taking back and I'm going to lose my queen. I won't know the material count, but at the end of the day, I just put my rook here. He's playing that. I'm going to take with a rook. I'm going to take with a rook. We'll see what he does. Um, remember, my next move's probably going to be like queen here and rook over. Maybe to d1, maybe to e1. One of the two, okay? Now, remember last time when this pin was there, I had the option to go queen here, queen here. I'm going to go queen here. I chose this one last time. I haven't yet met someone who's taken my knight and doubled my pawns and made me realize maybe how bad these, these pawns are. So I'm going to keep doing this move. I'm going to take back. And I just lost material. So now I'm probably pretty tilted. And I'm probably realizing that this move, when he took, all of a sudden I lost my rook in the center. Completely logical, completely logical way for that to happen. Because I played queen d2 last time that I had a bishop pinning my knight. Maybe now in general I'm learning like, okay, maybe I want to put my queen on this square. So it's actually guarding the thing in the center. Or that I can actually take back the queen there. Who knows? I'm going to play rook to the center. I, bl I just blundered. But at the end of the day, rook e1 is probably still the, the best next move. So we'll see what he does here. And I didn't lose it for free. Remember, I didn't lose it for free. We did get a piece out of it. So although it looks like I hung it for free, not quite. Okay, queen there. We've already got <laughs> lots of space in front of our king, that's for sure. What is it time for? It's time for a random pawn move. Okay, he's hit our knight. I can't go here. And then I'm going to go here. I always want to choose a central square. Okay, knight takes. Now, rook, bishop, pawn, all options. Um, in general, I would say that it's more natural to recapture with pieces, especially because it brings them closer to the enemy. Feels like you're getting, you're making an aggressive attacking move. So I'm going to go here. Uh, Codexa, well, I had a choice between queen d2 and queen e2, and you're asking why I didn't choose queen d3, and uh, the main reason is because um, I, I, I couldn't. I physically couldn't. So that's mainly why I didn't choose it. But uh, more generally, I don't think queen d3 is a bad move at all. I think queen d3 still watches over the knight, and it gets out of the pin. So it's a good move to keep in mind. Absolutely. Rook there, it's like, dude, I don't know... Yeah, I literally don't know what that move is. That's a, that's an exchange. Easy. Now, this is a check. This is a check. Do we do those? Absolutely, yes, we do those. Which one is more likely? It's kind of hard to say. I, I think this is reasonable. I think this is reasonable. Okay, he moves. I mean, again, I've got queen bishop. It's like, I, I don't know. At, at this point, it's kind of tough to know exactly what people are going to do. I'm just going to put my queen in the center. Can't be a bad move. Thank you, Jonifer. Very kind of you. Rook over. So he's hitting my queen. Hitting my queen. I um, think it's fairly reasonable to take one of these pawns. Basically, you click on your queen because you know you have to move it. You click it, and then you look at all these dots. And you're like, which one do I go to? No, 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 no. Yes. No, no. Wait. Yes. No. Wait. Start again. No, 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 no. No, no. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No, yes, yes. Okay, so where were the yeses? I have literally no idea. I'm going to pick this one. Looks safe. Looks safe. Let's see what he does. Might be time for a few more pawn moves. Okay, check. Check is nice and easy. I click my king. There's literally one dot. Boom. Insta move. Insta move. These are the best things to have. Forced moves. Absolute best. 
Okay, he literally goes back. I'm like, man, this guy's so bad at chess. So I'm gonna take my queen from the new square. And now, now I'm gonna take something. I'm like, I'm pissed now. I'm like, okay, let's go, buddy. Let's, you know, that's mine. Boom. It says take free pieces. Yes, it doesn't say take free pawns. So you don't have to. If it's pieces, I think they generally should be taken. Okay. This is literally more stuff for me. I'm just going to take it. I took one. Of course, I'm going to keep taking the other. I'm going to take all three if he lets me. I'm going to take all three. Okay. Not going to put a lot of thought into it. Just going to keep taking. Okay, he's checked me. I'm going to touch my king. And what have I talked about in the end games? Generally move towards the middle. So I'm going to choose this square. I could choose this one. But if you guys remember in a previous game, I also chose to go towards the middle when it was pretty close to the end of the game. Okay, he goes here. That doesn't make a threat to me. I'm going to take another pawn. I've literally been on the seventh rank just taking pawns. Now he checked me. Touched my king. There's only one dot. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. King up. Okay, Brooke, I'm going to touch my king. One dot. I'm going to move it. Probably going to take this pawn next. And I just got made it. What should I have done? I should have blocked. But how am I going to know to block? I'm literally 400. There's no way I could rationalize with 14 seconds that I'm supposed to play bishop e4. I'm going to play king d2. There's only one dot. There's only one dot. Now we lost. I'm going to check the, the analysis again, of course. Does this mean that habits are bad for you? No, it means you build them up. I estimated that what I wrote on screen was worth about 400 elo. And after a couple games, I've hovered around 400 elo. And then you put those building blocks on. You add, you add some things to it, and then you start improving. That's the idea. OK, let's see the report. Okay, nice. I played with 19.7% uh, accuracy. Okay, so I'm quitting this game, basically. Um, I almost had as many uh, blunders as I did good moves. How is castling there again? This is actually a troll. <laughs> How is castling there again? No, at this point, it is a troll. How can I castle better? In fact, that's the only good thing I did this game. If you guys look at the evaluation, I castled right around here. I had the advantage when I castled. I had the goddamn advantage. I lost the advantage after I castled. So, matter of fact, chess.com, maybe I should be asking you the questions. Why castle at all, huh? Maybe I should put you in the hot seat. Maybe they want me to castle the other way. Yeah, that could be the issue. I haven't castled queenside yet. Pass pawns is a lesson. So as soon as I took these pawns here, chess.com wants me to push, push to win. Push to win. Okay, 19.7. Game accuracy is a score measuring the accuracy of your moves on a scale of 0 to 100 when compared to the top chess computer moves. All I know is that chess.com does not tell me whether or not 0 or 100 is closest to the computer moves. All it says is it compares the moves 0 to 100. Maybe it's like golf. 19.7. Low score wins. I'm just saying. They haven't indicated. I probably think I played a great game there. We're on to the next one. On to the next one. E4. Habits. Here. Here. We've done this before, guys. It should get faster and faster. We have done this before. Okay. He's attacking that. It's defended. I'm going to go here. We've also done this before. Now, again, he's doing this. I've done this before. This is the setup. I've played every game. Every time I get attacked, I always go back here. So I can start playing these moves pretty quickly. Full screen board. Hell yeah. we got to remind people the... Uh, Got to remind people of the rules at the end of the day. 
Um, bishop there, basically um, going to react the same way I reacted over here, which is at any time they put their bishop there, I'm just going to kick it with a pawn move. Okay. I take back. I don't know if double pawns are good or bad, but hey, I'm just, I'm just playing the moves here. Okay, there, we're castling. We're castling. I think I had a like pretty good transition there, pretty good flick. Okay, I'm going to play h3 again every time this has happened. Now, maybe I remember last game I took like this and lost. So I'm like, dude, I'm taking like this. I'm a goddamn genius. Okay, he goes here. Now, rook to the middle. I've done this every time. He castles. I got to develop this bishop. I can't go here. I can't go here. I'm probably going to choose here. Probably going to choose here. Got a castle better? Look, I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. Okay, so I just played this. I'm probably going to do this next. Queen d7. Again, not going to think too much. Just, I think everything is kind of on the square it needs to be right now. A5. Pretty much don't know what's going on over there, but it's time for a random pawn move. And because he played something over here, it's very, very would you say on brand to also play something over there? It's like, oh, oh, you're coming at me on the left? I got homies on the left. You know, I got I got people on the left. You don't you don't take the left side of the board. I got the left side of the board. That's my side of the board as well. It's very, you know, like 400 level. If someone does something on the right side of the board, it's like, boom, I'm immediately on the right side. If someone does something on the left, it's like, boom, I'm on the left. Like, you know, I'm, I'm with you, man. You're not getting free licks on me. Now, can I take that? Yes. Immediate take. Immediate take. Okay, he takes back. Is he threatening something? Not really. Um, it's time for me to make sort of a random pawn move. Um, let's go here. It attacks something. This looks reasonable. Would a 400 see bishop takes h6? Hell no. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. There's no chance. There's no chance. Okay, he goes knight back. Now, at this point, I think it's time to play this. It's a central pawn move. I am backing it up with, like, three things. So I feel pretty confident doing this. I feel pretty confident doing this. Why would the bishop take h6? Because uh, we can take the knight at the end. But that's so advanced, I don't even understand it. So I'm surprised he's not taking it. In fact, I think he's just wasting time. He's obviously going to take. We're at 400 here. Can we just uh, accelerate the process here? Pawn takes pawn. We're waiting for that. Wow. So he comes up with this move. Now, he comes up with this move. Look, what should we absolutely be doing? Cardinal rule. It's written on the screen. You take free pieces. You do not hang them yourself, and you always take them when presented. No matter what moves your opponent does, you take stock. You take a couple seconds and be like, what the hell did he just do? And what is now available to me? That's a free piece. We take those. Yes, absolutely. We should play g4 against g5. And that's probably what I would do if it did not hang a piece. But hanging pieces are written on the screen. James Blunder says he would resign with black right now and drink beer. And I wouldn't drink beer because that's not on the screen. But if you offered me a free beer, then I would join you. Always take free things from your opponent. Okay, he's hitting our bishop. Now, I don't think it's unreasonable to go into the center. That's what we've been talking about. Bishop into the middle. Let's go. We're not going to hang a free piece, and we're going to put it in the center. I think that follows a lot of rules. Wow, my opponent just resigned. <laughs> sure. I didn't know 400s resigned. My, my advice for 400 is never resign. <laughs> never resign. What's up, Sui, Neprosto? 
Yeah, this guy has to be a smurf. There's no way. There's no way. 400s don't resign. Never resign needs to be a rule on screen. Yeah, I couldn't fit everything. Obviously, there's other rules, but I think I'm mentioning it as we go. But yeah, don't, don't resign. I think that's just clear. Okay, I won the game. Obviously, I'm not going to go learn anything from it. Just next game. Whenever you win, you just click play again. That's just how it is. Always click play again. Okay, d4. So against e4, we've been playing e5. Against d4, let's play d5. Okay, this guy just did something I've never seen before. This is a gambit? <laughs> to me, it's not. To me, this idiot just gave me a pawn. Okay, e4. Uh, I'm probably going to get my knights out the same way that I've been doing. Okay, I'm going to get my knights out again. Okay, I mean, at this point, I've developed my knights. Um, I want to get my bishops out, but hey, I might notice there's a hanging pawn there. I might. You know why I might notice it? Because I literally just put my knight there. And whenever you put your knights there, you're not just doing it blindly. You're not like, oh yeah, I just always do it. You're doing it because you know it's a good move and because you know it attacks these squares. And if your opponent's not going to bring his knights out to match you, Anytime you bring your knights out and they do not match you with their knights, you should probably give some consideration to, can I just win a pawn in the center? So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take a free pawn in the center. Well, to me, it's free. To me, it's free. Okay, he goes knight there. <laughs> Dude, I am not even going to think I'm going to take that. Check. Oh my god, it's a check as well. Oh my god, it's a queen trade. Dude, easy moves. I can whip these out. All right, now, uh, I think this move is definitely on the docket here. Definitely. This helps my bishop get free to probably go to that square if I can, because that's exactly where I've been going every game. And against e4, I've always played e5. Now, let's play sort of the move that we usually play when we see this, which is that. I've played that every time. 400s don't trade queens, 400s trade everything. So I've always played this, so let's do it. That's what I've been doing. Knight e5. He's putting his knight in the center. I probably recognize that's a good move. It would take me some time, but I should eventually realize he's making some threats here. If I click that knight, and I think, where can it go? Here and here come to mind. Now, this attacks this. Do I know that's a fork? Probably not. Probably not. Um, you know, is it possible that I try to defend one of these? Yes. Can I defend both? Actually, no. So I'm probably going to lose one of these. Do I know which one's more valuable? Probably not. Probably not. I think it's reasonable that I don't really know the difference. So. 400 would play c6, totally reasonable. I think developing my bishop and defending a pawn is also reasonable, but I, I agree. I think either of these moves is fine. I would always advocate for moving a piece, developing a piece where possible. Hitting the center happens to also guard this. I think if you can move a piece to accomplish the same thing as moving a pawn, you should move a piece. Mine knows the 400 would play c6, maybe, but following our rules, I don't think c6 is any more likely than bishop d6. Maybe it's more likely for most 400s, but according to our rules, bishop d6 controls the center square, develops a piece that we know we want to develop, and definitely to me is the more likely move based on the rules that we're trying to follow. Okay, this is a check. Okay, uh, I'm going to go up here. Check. Yeah, I probably didn't even know what that was. Click the king, there's like multiple dots. I'm like, oh god, which one do I pick? We're gonna go here. Now, this guy's trolling me because I'm gonna get the goddamn castling thing again. So be like, hey, uh, you moved your king to e7, idiot. You should have castled. <laughs> okay, so he goes back. Am I just gonna go back to the same square? Probably not. Um, let's say I go here, stay in the center. Mm 
let's just go in the center. My next move is probably this. Why? Because it's bishop in the center, exactly the way I've been doing it every game. Okay, he goes there. I don't even see what's going on, so I'm just going to go here. Got in a chest about a year ago. Started at 400. I'm 1900 bullet now, but I would have been 2300 if I had this guide. Okay, that's something I can take, so I'm going to capture that immediately. Okay, bishop here. I don't really know what he's doing, but I can take this. So I'm going to take it. Okay, so the general goal is... I could, I could say that you sort of evaluate this as an endgame. We say in the endgame we want to move the king a lot. The other thing is, generally I've been moving my rooks to the middle. And right now, if I move my rook here, we can't do that. I think a total, totally reasonable move here is this. Why? Anytime a bishop has gone here, here here or here, we've always played a3, h3, a6, h6. So I think this is completely reasonable. a6, attack the bishop. Okay, bishop goes back. Now I can play my rook to the middle of the board. Okay, he goes up. It's pretty normal, in my opinion, for me to just copy him. Maybe you want to get my rook out. Okay, do I see this? Absolutely not. I have no idea what that move is. Okay, it's time for a random pawn move. Here we go. Okay, he's attacking my pawn. I'm going to move it again. Can't miss it a second time at third. He goes here. Uh, time for more random pawn moves. Let's keep pushing. Okay, he goes there. Maybe I see this, maybe I don't. Let's go for more pawn. Okay, check. I touched my king, one dot, easy. You see it after four moves? Why would I? If I'm not looking for it on move one, why do I see it after four moves? Remember, this bishop's guarding this pawn, and he's got two rooks lined up against it. So the chances of me moving it away, very slim, very slim. Okay, he goes there. I think we go here. Just moving pawns, kind of random pawn moves. And you notice I've started to play a little bit quicker. And I think that, okay, another pawn move. Okay, I don't know what en passant is. I have literally no idea. So um, I'm going to move my king. Okay, he moves the rook up. At this point, my rooks aren't really doing anything. I'm going to start attacking his bishop. I mean, I've done... I've done... Uh, I've moved all my pawns. I literally can't move another pawn. <laughs> I actually can't. I can't move it. He can't take this because my bishop's defending. And then he takes it, and I try this for about, um, let's give it 10 seconds. Okay, now I realize I'm in check. Uh, let's go to the center, the king here. Must be a bug again. Yeah, okay, he checks me again. I'll probably go back up and, you know, I'll probably just do, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just like going, doing the same do the same moves. It's a bug. Okay, so I attacked this last time. I'm I'm gonna be taking that. Goes here. I think we're just gonna take again. Rookie five. Okay. So in fairness, uh, I would probably do this again because in my head I'm like, dude. 
that was such a bug when I couldn't take on F4. Is it? It actually is bugged. Okay, give it at least 10 seconds there. And then you probably take with the king. Okay, active king. Active king. Free rook. Free rook. Rooks. 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 Just, just need the rooks. And we need the king. I said we want to move the king a lot. We want to move the king a lot. And take pawns. Flagged. Flagged. Literally just flagged. Because I couldn't take this rook. I lost 20 seconds doing that. 20 seconds. Actually, though. And that happens. That's real. That's so real. This guy hung his rook. In my head, he hung his rook twice. He hung it here and he hung it here. I couldn't take it either time. It's quite frustrating. It's quite frustrating. Whoa. Potent ponables. My guy. 50 gifted subs. Whoa. 50 gifted. Potent. How you doing? How you doing? Potent. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, oh, we just got a lot of follows after those 50 gifted subs. Potent. You know why? Because I think people realize they have a better chance to get a gifted sub if they're following. So they saw 50 gifted. They're like, All right, damn, let me follow this channel. <laughs> I want to quick follow real, real quick. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, uh, Potent. Yep, that's uh, all scam to get people following. There we go. Yep, got a lot of followers now. Thank you, guys. Potent really uh, coming through. <laughs> hey, bro. Y'all got any more of them gifted subs? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Potent Ponables, though. 50 gifted. Sub bombs like that. Very special, very special. You can tell Potent is uh, he's learning a thing or two. Some people have been asking in the chat, is this a satirical series? Is this a joke? Um, yes and no. Number one, um, am I being serious about everything? Yes, I'm actually trying to represent what I think a 400 would do. I'm also trying to say, look, if you only do these things on screen, those are good fundamentals and they will make you a better player the more you do them. You build those habits and then you add to them. I know that I'm losing a lot of games. Now, maybe I'm losing because of the, the mouse, the speed. Maybe I'm losing because I'm, I don't know any tactics, but we're going to add those on and we're going to build our rating up and that's going to be, you know, later on in this series. But for now, this is us starting out at chess. We've never played chess before. We make a brand new account on chess.com and we only use these things on screen as our guidelines. And I want to show you guys what level we end up at. It could be 400. Hey, it could be 100. It could be 1000. I don't know. I haven't tried it. That's why I'm trying it right now. So I'm doing my best to follow these guidelines on screen because I think that they are fairly accurate in terms of representing how 400s play and how you might play at 400. And maybe there's a few things in there that you're not doing. Maybe there's a few things that you are, but if you try to do all of them the way that I am illustrating, hopefully, um, I think I'm just trying to give you guys an accurate representation of what level you might end up at with only this. And then we'll add on to that and we'll eventually move up the rating ladder. Okay, so. We lost this game, so we're obviously going to analyze it. Okay. We're going to see the report. Um, so 27.6 accuracy. And I don't even have castling. What? This is literally teaching me to not castle properly. This is teaching me to play king d8. No, this is actually troll. Chess.com actually out here trolling me. This is why 400s play stuff like king d8. You got chess.com out here trolling. There's no cabinet to think I castle correctly now. That's actually what I'm supposed to think based on that. So I played better. Yeah, I was closer to zero. Best move, 15, 15. Excellent. Four, three, good. Five, four. Damn. I mean, this is, this is a close game. This is actually a very close game. Very close game. Maiden three. Damn, I missed the maiden three. Check out the analysis. It's like, damn, where'd I miss my maiden three? Yeah, maiden three right here. Maiden three. Damn, damn. Did you guys see the maiden three here? 
the maiden three. So it says king c5, f4, rook h e2, f5, rook there, mate. That's incredible. So I should have seen this. This is good to work on when you're 400. King c5, f4, uh, rook here, f5, and then rook e3, mate. This is the type of stuff you want to be practicing at 400. Absolutely. No, no, not castling. <laughs> God forbid I castle correctly. Nope. <laughs> gotta be gotta be looking out for those maiden threes, boys. Absolutely. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, no, that's just that's on me. That's on me. What can I say? Next game. Next game. Should have seen it. Should have seen it. Okay, we're playing Paul fifty five hundred. He has numbers in his name. Basically anybody who has numbers in their name, you can assume they're like a worse version of the player that doesn't have numbers in their name. That's that's almost for sure. There's not too many, not too many very strong players who have numbers in their name. So if you have numbers in your chess.com username, you should definitely consider removing them. Um, okay, so let's guard that pawn. This is the reaction to him developing that knight. Exactly, fins 0895. Just imagine fins without 0895. Grandmaster, for sure. Knight f6. This is what we've been doing the whole time. Okay, I've also been playing this move every game. He's literally playing the whale, isn't he? Dan? Is Dan upstairs? Play Actually, he's actually playing the whale. We just learned about this. He's actually playing the whale against me. It's actually Dan Smurf, for sure. Dan is doing his own series. Okay, castling as soon as possible, sure. We've done our central moves. Um, let's put that bishop in the middle. Uh, we want to bring our rook there. Okay, now he's attacking this pawn. Do I see it? Ah, I don't know. I don't know if I see it. Let's say I, let's say I don't see it. Let's say I don't see it. Um, I think it's very reasonable that I would I would see it and play like rook there or b6. Okay, he takes here. This is a hanging piece. Um, this move accomplishes what I've been playing every single game, which is bringing the queen out, bishop. Okay, he goes back. Um, I don't think it's crazy to to do this move. Okay, he goes here. Now, I've seen bishops here, and I've always gone like this, so I don't think it's unreasonable to do that. Basically, if, if something appears there, I'm generally kicking it out. Okay, he goes back. This guy's pretty lame. Uh, okay, at this point, time for a random pawn move. Let's throw that up the board. Okay, so he goes there. He stops me dead in my tracks. Um, what do we need now? We need uh, another move. Let's put a knight in the center. Knight in the center. We've already got our sort of random pawn move on the king side to give us that square. We don't have any more pawns to push. And hey, that's a move in the center. Let's go. Unlimited. Thanks for the tier 3 sub, man. Knight d4. So... Um, I mean, obviously I'm attacking a lot of things. I'm going to take something. Yeah. So queen there. That bishop. Do I see that it's a fork? Nope. Do I see that? Hell no. What do I see? That it's free. I have to take it. It's a free piece. There's nothing guarding it. That's a free piece. So I, it doesn't matter that it's a fork. I don't, I don't know that. I probably just took... I can't even see that it's attacking two things. But he's about to move his king. And then I'm going to be like, dude... You are so bad at chess. You just lost your bishop and your queen. Knight. If I click it, I'll see all the dots. This is the highest value thing I can take. Let's go. Oh, always take the queen, Grandmaster Flash. Always take the queen. Whenever you make an exchange, you look for the highest value thing you can take. If not, you take something of equal value. And you try not to take things... Of lesser value, of course. What is it time for? Probably another random pawn. 
Okay, he's going there. Um, let's go like this. You know why? I've got one, two, three, four, five things supporting it. And I did this in the other game. And it kind of worked out. You know, the game where the guy resigned all of a sudden. I said, hey, the four, the 400s resigned. I played uh, this move as well. Now, I'm, I'm hanging a pawn here, but I'm not hanging a piece. Hanging pawns is okay. It's the pieces we want to make sure we do not hang for free. Okay, his knight's attacking my queen. Queen, where do I want to go? This looks like the most central square. I'm going to go here. Okay, he defends that. Now, I've played this. He goes like that. Now it's time to take something. Always got to take. I'm taking the thing in the center because that's sort of where I said I was going to play. Okay, he takes. Now, what have we done in the past is, at this point, we sort of start to play as much in the center as possible. I think one of these two pieces to, to the center makes sense. People love to move their queen at the 400 level. I would say this is very logical, even though it, it sort of runs into a knight c6 in the future. I think, you know, people love to use their queen. Now, what is that? That is a free piece. That's mine. There we go. Now, he goes there, that's another free piece. And I would never consider, even if the knight wasn't there, I would never consider two pieces for the rook. So we take more free things. All free. Now, if he trades, of course we're going to take it back. Free and free. Okay, we take that back? Yes, we do. And then we'll see what he does here. I have a, a move probably that I'm planning to do. Why? Because it's in the center. It's in the center and it's free. Okay, my bishop's being attacked. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna move to the safest square. None of these work, you know. I'm not gonna even think about this because I got a hanging piece, I gotta react. This looks pretty far away. I think d7 of all the squares available for me is the safest and the closest to the center. So I'll probably go here. Thank you, Isa. Tier three. That's right, guys, exclamation mark masks. We're selling face masks in the chess bra store. They're pretty affordable. You can get a four pack as well. Some chess broad designs there. Okay, he goes rook d1. Now, the goal is to take things that are free. That's always been my rule. Queen takes knight for free. And he resigns. What's with this 400 is resigning? Damn. Damn. Paul 5500, you see? You see, I'm telling you. 5500. Gets rid of those numbers. He's going to be improving. We've cracked 400 again. We've cracked 400 again. I used to be at 300, now I'm at 400. We, we're, we're making our way up. We're making our way up. Oh, that's right. We beat the whale. Hang on. The whale's not doing too well right now, boys. <laughs> the, the, the whale's not having a good time. Just It's getting harpooned out here. Nice try, Dan. Trying to ruin the speed run. I see you. I see you, buddy. Yeah. Let's close all these other games. These previous analysis sessions. Whale 0% win rate. Yeah, feels bad. Feels bad. All right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and um, probably intentionally not wash hands. Gotta stay real dirty at the 400 level. Um, and I'll be right back.
Let's go for another game, of course. Oh, Wish 47. Poor guy's going to get stomped on here. He's got numbers. When am I going to mix in tactics? In part two, of course. Okay, E4. We know what we want to do. That was quick. I really didn't wash my hands. Well, of course. I told you guys I wasn't. All right. We've seen this before. Build the habit. Start to play these moves quicker and quicker. It'll save you time in the opening, and it'll help you later in the game. You'll have more time to spend on the other moves, which are going to be trickier. Okay, I've done this move before. Hopefully you guys are getting used to it, in all seriousness. Um, my openings have not been a disaster. And that's at the 400 level. Some guys in the openings at 400 are blundering tons of stuff. But in general, I, I think I've had good openings in most games. castle as soon as possible this i've done this before i have had this exact setup in multiple games how am i going to get my rating up if we're losing on time well remember the instincts as you move up the rating ladder are going to get better and better First of all, pre-moves are eventually going to be added in. On top of that, okay, he goes here. I think we're going to play the moves we've played every time. We're going to win the rook and the bishop. And, uh, of course, you're going to learn a thing or two about endgame, so you're going to actually have an idea what to do if you get down to a rook endgame, to a knight endgame, etc. Why are pre-moves bad? Pre-moves are okay, but at the... Uh, at the 400 level, they're not necessary, and most of the time it's probably better that you can't use them. <laughs> you shouldn't use them. Don't know what he's doing here. He's making random pawn moves. He's pretty much doing exactly what I said was expected from 400s. I'm going to be making some as well, but not before I finish my development the way that I've outlined. Okay, knight over here. Do I have any clue what he's doing? Not really. I'm going to keep doing my moves. This is my next move. Okay, G3. Um, I think we're still going to do this. Okay, now once I've done this, it's probably time for my random pawn move in front of King. Potent uh, bonables, it, the, the openings you choose are not entirely relevant. Remember, when you're at 400, I think it's good to start out with like e 45 But as you start to progress a little bit higher, you should choose an opening that you enjoy and sort of do a little research on it. Like some people like the French, the Cairo Khan, the King's Indian, whatever. Once you pick that opening, then you should stick with it. Are there better openings than others? There are probably ones I wouldn't recommend for certain levels, but then there are also... Um, there's the argument that you should just play what you enjoy. So if for some reason you enjoy playing the French, the King's Indian, whatever it is, just do it. Don't see any uh, any problem with that. Um, could maybe just like or some juice. Yeah, it's like some some mix, some mix. Thank you. So I I don't think there's obviously there's better openings than others, potent, but shouldn't wrap yourself up in, in being too worried about that. Okay, let's play this. He's expanding over here. This is a move I like to play sometimes. And when I see him doing this, I'm, I feel inclined to do this as well. But no, there's nothing wrong with Queen's Gambit is white. French and Karakan with black. Um, I think those are, those are good openings. The French is the one of all those, which I would be the most careful of. It gives a lot of space to your opponent, and at the lower levels, I think that you should be trying to take as much space as possible, not the other way around. Okay, he's gone here. I'm going to play some central moves. I'm going to bring my knight into the center, and I'm probably going to play this move next. This is a move I've utilized before. Once I basically get everything out of the way, or, or get everything developed, I often end up going for d5. And you guys have seen this in previous games, so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to stick with that.
what was the quote? I fear not the man who plays a thousand openings, um, but the man who has played one opening a thousand times. Um, I haven't heard it like that before. The one I've heard is, um, I fear not the man who has slept with a thousand women, but the man who has slept with one woman a thousand times. Let's go d5. This is the, the move that I've been planning. Thank you. Okay, my guy just went knight b1. What on earth is he doing? I don't know. I'm going to take a free pawn. And after he takes back, if he takes back. Okay, so my knight's hanging. What am I going to do? Well, now that I'm forced to move my knight, I think it's reasonable that I would trade here based on our rules. I think going back is also possible, but in general, I just took a pawn. So I'm up one pawn, and you should always trade when you're up a pawn. Okay, this guy's hanging. Guys, I'm just following I'm just following the rules here. The rules that I laid out. I'm going to take a pawn, I'm going to trade pieces, and I'm going to keep taking more pawns. That's what we said. Okay. I don't think you guys are going to be offended if I take that. That is a trade of 3 points for 5 points. Quick maths. Okay, takes back now. Now it's my turn again. Now we're going to need a few moves. This is hanging, but, you know, I might not see that. Let's just make some random pawn moves first. Thanks for the subs, Marcos TV, uh, Bobo Baggins, two months. Appreciate that. ESAP Unlimited with the, um, the tier three is unlimited with the... Uh, Many, many gifted subs. Left hand man, 15 months fishing for H2 for 25. It's Jonifer with five gifted. Tramposa, TSL, Brian J. Still Live, Mr. Counter Gambit gifting a sub. I appreciate it, guys. He's attacking my pawn here. Do I see it? Not sure. But either way, I think it's fair to push this pawn. It's in the center. It's exactly what I want to do. And it hits the knight. Okay, he's attacking my queen. Now, you guys have remembered in the past. When my queen's been hit this way, I've always gone queen d6, so I think I should do that move. Okay, he goes here. That's a trade. We do those. We do those. And again, it might take you longer to find this move, but because I'm sitting here explaining everything to the chat, I kind of lose time on my clock because of that. So that's why I'm able to make this move like immediately, because I think it sort of evens out over the course of the game. Now, my turn here. What should I be doing? Well, it'd be nice to come up with some plan, but it's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to do. I might do a random pawn move. Here. If he takes me, I want to take it back. Now, again, if you guys are looking at the position, you might say, wait, why isn't he going here, here, and here? I mean, that's a pretty advanced sort of maneuver. It's not the easiest. Okay, I got my queen. Let's get in there and attack some things. Now, am I hanging this? Yes. Am I hang hanging this? Yes. Do I see it? Probably not. Your plan would be get that knight, to, that knight to f3? Well, that's a great plan. That's a great plan. I just attacked this rook and he didn't defend it. I will take that. Let's go. That's mine to take. And he goes here. Technically, I should be taking this. That's another free piece. Okay, and in this case, do you guys remember previous game when I had my queen and pawn here? What did I do? All I did was I tried to push this pawn to the finish line. Then I got my queen out of the way, and I pushed my pawn some more. We've done this before. This is not anything, anything new. Okay, he's going here. He's actually just hanging stuff. There we go. We'll take that win. We'll take that win. There we go. Yeah, that was 408. Yeah, we're really climbing. Chris Murrah. Thanks, buddy. 
It's tough to find an opening to stick to as black every game. It is very difficult, honestly. It's a lot easier to do that with white, like the London system or something. We won the game. We're obviously not going to check it. Uh, Chess.com. I can't. I can't even make this. I can't make this up. By the way, Chess.com game report actually says one player managed to earn the win. It's like, it's like yeah, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's what happens. Ninety percent of games. <laughs> In fact, maybe a hundred percent of games at the four hundred level. <laughs> one player managed to earn the win. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> Remarkable. Will this be on YouTube? I think so. I think so. We might give it a go. It is both honest and satirical, but mostly honest advice. Go for the next game. We won that, so we're just we're feeling good. On to the next one. All right. E4. We've done this. Okay, we've done knight f3. We know these moves. Do I see that's hanging? No, I'm just sticking with the principle of when he develops that knight, I develop that knight. Yeah, no numbers in his name. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right there. Gotta be careful of buddy. Okay, now here, I think it's completely reasonable that I, I take this pawn. I think that makes a lot of sense here. But for argument's sake, I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna get my uh, general setup going. Okay, this is what I've been doing. I've seen, guys, how many times have I seen this move? Honestly, I've played maybe like, I don't know, eight to 10 games and I've seen this probably four to five times or something. And every time it happens, you, I always go back. Like th this is very common, very common. So that's a habit, we're building that. Every time that I see B5, I'm going Bishop back and I'm not even thinking twice. Bishop there, I've had this before. So what I'm trying to say is that over 10 games, my rating was probably about 400. So over 10 games, you do these things on screen, you're going to end up maybe the same rating. Okay, he's hung this pawn enough times. I think maybe it's time to take it. Don't think that's unreasonable. But over 100 games, I think the rating should go up. You eventually will, will build these habits and recognize these patterns in your chess which is, you know, some bishop comes out here, you always kick it. I get attacked like that, I always go back. I always stay on the diagonal with the bishops if I get attacked, that controls the center. And you slowly start to build these patterns. Okay, he attacks my knight, I think we just go back. Okay, he goes here. That's easy capture. Okay, we can't take it. That's a little tilting. Another bug from chess.com. Um, uh, I think once I try to capture a billion times, what I'm gonna notice is that there's only one dot on the screen. And because I've tried to do this so many times, out of frustration, I'll probably play this move. Let's, let's be real. Okay, he goes knight here. Honestly, um, castling is supposed to be something that I do as soon as possible. Um, and that's why I wanted to illustrate, on the screen it says castle ASAP. Obviously, if your pieces are getting attacked or if a bishop comes out and you always play a certain move, do those things. But there are, there are times where so many things are gonna happen that you maybe don't get castled until a little bit later. It's good to do it ASAP, but sometimes you have to react to things. Now, in this case, He's moved knight there. Every time I see something go here or here, I generally push the pawn up h3. Now, I've said as a rule, if it's a bishop, do that 100% of the time. If it's a knight, you could do this, but technically if I'm following those rules, you should castle ASAP. Finally, after this move, which doesn't threaten anything to me, the, the king should castle. But I totally understand if someone played h3 there because you're also kind of following some of the habits that you've built up so far. So h3 is a very reasonable move. Very reasonable move. But castling as quick as possible, as soon as it's 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 you know possible to do so. Okay, can I can I take that? No. Do I know what on pass on is? Hell no. I'm probably clicking this pawn. I see a dot there. I'm like, yeah, all right, chess.com. Bunch of idiots. Definitely don't know what you're doing. 
uh, h3. Why? Because that's the move I was debating about whether we castle or play h3. Now that I've castled, I'm going to do the other move. Now that I'm going to do the other. Okay, that's an exchange. We definitely do those. Um, okay, so he went here. I probably don't even know what a mouse slip is. At this point, I'm just thinking my opponent is like new to the game. Um, so I'm going to play rook here. Not only does it defend it, but that's exactly a move we want to do. Another bug, yeah. <laughs> Guy couldn't get all the way to e5. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. It's a rookie one. Sure. Knight d7. Easy capture. Easy capture. Okay, he takes with the queen. Um, I'm going to play a move that I've played in most games so far. I'm going to play bishop to f4. It covers the center. You know, this is exactly what, what I need to do. Rook there, easy capture. He's gonna take, and what move are we gonna do by building habits? We're gonna go here, I've done this like many times so far. Always get the queen up to here, here, and mostly, you know, you're, well here I don't have a choice because it's covered, so I'm gonna go here. My next move is gonna be rook over, but you know, I've done these things before. So what I'm trying to say is like in this game, I have a very good position here. He had some mouse slips, he missed some things, I missed some things. Now, I've seen this move before. What happened when, when someone did this last time? I said, look, you got homies on the left side of the board. I got homies on the left side of the board. I've done this before too. I've actually seen this exact permutation. Double pawns there, a4, take on b4. I've done this all before. These are now habits. Could I take that? Yes, but let's focus on bringing the rooks to the center. Yeah, I, I certainly agree that knowing how the pieces move means sort of knowing what on passant is, but learning to apply that at the 400 level is definitely, definitely not something you're going to do. Free pawn? Yeah, it's not a free piece, though. We haven't been taking all free pawns. You know, for example, I might take it now, but in general, we haven't been taking all free pawns. What I'm going to do, I'm going to play a move which is a pawn move, but it's also in the center. This looks like a good one. Low-rated player would have taken that pawn? Sure, of course. But a low-rated player might not have done these other moves which I've done, which are pretty good in my opinion. So again, I'm not painting a picture of every 400. Every 400 is different. I'm painting a picture of a 400. And I think that if you follow these rules, you'll have a pretty solid base. That's a, a pawn. We're capturing that. No question about it. No question about it h6. Okay, now in this position I think bishop there is a com completely reasonable move. I don't think I don't think anything's wrong with this. It's a free pawn. Um, I think we take it. Do I know there's a pin there? No, probably not. It's a pawn in the center and I'm attacking it. Let's take that. Now, do I see this? Of course I don't. Now, imagine this king was here. I would play queen takes bishop because it's a hanging piece and of course I would lose this. The reason I'm gonna get lucky here is because this is a check. But if that king was here already, I would definitely blunder this rook. That'd be a case where, yeah, that, that's a blunder that's very easy to make following my rules. Now, he's played queen here. Queen trade is good, but technically that is a hanging rook. So you wanna click the queen, you look where the dots are, and you'll see there's one over there. That's a free piece. We gotta take that, part of the rules. Okay, queen there. Do I see this? Absolutely not. That's a queen trade. Why am I happy to take it? Because look at the pawns that are left. All I have to do are push pawns to get a queen. He's got nothing left. He's got nothing left. Let's go get a queen. Let's go get a queen. You don't have to play perfect. Rook e8 might have been the best move, but what about getting a queen? That's good. Now I got a checkmate. Do I know how to checkmate properly? Not really. I'm just going to check until I can't check anymore. Okay, we're going to check and take a pawn. Why not? Okay, do I know how to mate here? Of course I do, with the lowest value piece possible. Of 
course. There's no question every 400 would play g3 mate. Easily. Easily. <laughs> My five raider. Yeah, get this 300 out of here. Grandmaster KOs a 300. <laughs> 